I'd like to welcome everyone to Maysville. Um, if you're visiting, stay around after uh, the devotional and let us get to know you. Uh, tonight our devotional will be by Corey Robinson. Our song of invitation will be 179, 179. And our closing prayer will be by Presley Campbell. I have a card to read here. Dear Maysville, thank you so much for the cards, visits, and especially the prayers during the loss of my mother. It truly is a blessing to be part of such a great church family and friends. Oh, you all, no, you all mean so much to our family, more than I could ever say. In Christian love, Johnny, Sharon, Warren, and family. It's already been put out, but uh, once again, our sympathy is extended uh, to the family of Mary Butler, who passed away Monday. Visitation will be Thursday at Spry Funeral Home from 12 to 1, and the funeral will be at 1. Vernon Perryman is at home now from rehab, so if you'd like to visit him, uh, please do so. Uh, please check in the kitchen for dishes. Please check the kitchen for dishes. They are, they are piling up, so if you have some back there, please get them. Um, please take home all personal items this evening in preparation for the wedding on Saturday. Anything not removed can be found Sunday morning in the service team room uh, corresponding to the area where you sit. And with that, we're all invited to the wedding of Courtney Hicks and Nathan Reithmeyer on Saturday, December 29th here at Maysville at 2 p.m. Also, it's been Jill's requested that we keep David Robinson in your prayers, in our prayers. Uh, David is going through chemo right now and he is having a rough time with it, so please keep him in your prayers. Also keep Patty Weaver in your prayers, who's recovering from surgery, and also Virginia Sanders. Please remember Basil Boggs also. That's all I have, Corey. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank everyone who's kind of came in their thoughts while I've been off at college. I've gotten a care package and uh, cards and things and uh, just want to say thank you for all that stuff it is very appreciated and I want to thank Tim and the elders tonight for giving me the chance to talk and let everybody hear what I have to say for Christmas I got a new phone it's a Samsung Galaxy S3 and it can do a lot of stuff it can text call email Facebook Twitter I mean all the normal stuff you would expect the phone to do and can download apps. I mean, I have a Bible on here. I can read just about any time I want to. Now, it has a lot of ways to stay informed for whatever about everything that's going on, everything that's going on in the media, all the way from what your neighbor posted on Facebook about what their kids got for Christmas, all the way to something that's happening in China. Now, it has everything in between that too. All the news, media and stuff, they post stuff on like Twitter. I mean, you hear about everything. Now, all of these things can be used to our advantage as Christians. If you'd like to turn in your Bibles, I'm going to read from Matthew 28, uh, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of ages. Now, most of us recognize that as the Great Commission. We as Christians have been given the task of spreading the gospel. We are presented with opportunities to do this all the time, but are we really taking advantage of these situations? People often have current events on their minds. So why not take advantage of having a conversation with someone about something they're already thinking about? Now, this is a little bit confusing, so let me kind of give you a quick example. The Mayan Apocalypse. 
Uh, it was supposed to happen last week. We weren't supposed to be here tonight. So kind of put off planning all this and <laughs> just did it the other day. Now, now is a great time to start talking about this kind of stuff and talking about false prophets. I mean, Tim did this this past Sunday. And keeping relevance will greatly increase the attention you receive and help your teachings be more effective overall. People will pay more attention. Now, it is a great tool for influential teaching. And we are all teachers. You may not realize it, but someone is always listening to you. You might be in the position I'm in tonight, or your audience may be just a small child sitting on your lap. Or maybe you're by yourself. We are all responsible for our own teaching as well as others. If you'd like to turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy 3, verses 14 through 17, so we'll be reading in just a second. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how you're, from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Think of all the resources that are around us that, we can use, that you can use to teach yourself, like a smartphone. We have so many chances to learn more about the Bible. Used to, people just had the Bible, which in itself is plenty, more than enough. But our resources now are seemingly unlimited. From right here, I can pull out my phone and pull up the lesson that Tim just had just a few minutes ago through our upstream. We have so many tools that we can use as Christians. Now again in 2 Timothy, just a little bit farther down, chapter 4, starting in verse 1, it says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears, they will be accumulated for themselves, teaching to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, enduring, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Are you ready? Maybe tonight you haven't followed what the Word says and been baptized, or maybe you would like prayers on the behalf of the church for something that's going on in your life. If we can assist you in any way at all tonight, please come as we stand and sing.
726, we'll use our closing song tonight. 726, through the uh, first and the second and fourth stanzas before we close in prayer. <clears throat> We saw the night when thou didst come to this world of sin and death, nor yet be held thy God in joy in that despised Nazareth. But within thee, thy first and strong, it's blessing on the people that are caring for them that they will recover Father we also ask that you will be with Basil that you return him to his health and Father all that we may be able to not be able to name at this time that you would bless them and such that they will be able to return to us and Father we thank you for your word and ask that you will give us the wisdom as we study your word to use it as you would have us to and ask that you would forgive us of our sins and you would return us back to our next meeting. These things we do pray in Christ's name.